For this lecture, what I'm going to do is take you through the right-hand rule a little bit. I know a couple of people had expressed interest in uh, better understanding how that's used and, and seeing some more examples of it. So the first thing that I did here was I, I drew a coordinate axis, and this would be an example of, say, the x-axis here. If I draw this on here, so, uh, actually this, this is normally considered the z-axis, in fact. This one up here, it doesn't really matter, you just have to be consistent. This would normally be the y-axis, and this would be the x-axis. And I think seeing this sort of three-dimensional three axis system probably helps a little bit with understanding the reasoning behind the right-hand rule. So what I've done here is I've drawn some symbols, and I'll, I'll probably use these as quick references in the future when using the right-hand rule. Um, but this would be the orangish part, would be the, the palm of the hand and the first force that's in play and the white part, or I'm sorry, the yellow part would be the fingers the direction that the fingers will curl and this part, it's sort of a lime green color that goes off to the side uh, would be the thumb. So these are the ways that, that your hand works and you can turn them all different ways. This is just a sampling of the different ways but let's say that you initially have uh, there's two right hand rules so we'll do the the second one that I actually taught you first um, let's say that you have a torque. You're trying to find the torque. And you know that the radius is up like this. So there's a lever arm that's up like so. And then you also know that there is a force being applied like so. Okay? So you've got the lever arm up, you've got the force off to the side. And what you would do then is you would put your hand up, up the screen, so this would indicate the direction of the radial vector. And then the second vector, the force, goes off this way. And that leads to your thumb. I think I actually did this completely backwards. That's unfortunate. Um, I definitely drew this one a little bit backwards. It should be over here be the way that that should go. Okay, so let's just get rid of this one while we're looking at it. Okay, so definitely this way would be the right way to, to go about doing that. And that gives us a direction. Now the reason why this is important is because if I have another, um, say, radius or force that's involved, um, let's say that I'm looking at something that is circular in shape. And so then I go off to this side here. And we have a force that's going in this direction. Okay? So you have your lever arm and your force here. Well, that looks an awful lot like this one. So I've drawn these two examples here, where the original vector is up, the second vector of the force in this case, because it's really R cross F. Okay, those are the, the vectors that we're working with. So we have R cross F. And in the first case, I do R, curl my fingers into the, the F direction, and my thumb points into the, into the screen in this case. Um, in this example, we have the radius off to the side, we have the force down, and the resulting vector of this cross product is still into the screen. And so what that's just saying is that even though I have these radiuses that are in different directions, and I have these forces that are in, in different directions, it ultimately doesn't matter because they're causing a twist in the same manner. So if you imagine that this is some sort of a... Oops some sort of a circle. And I apply a force here, and apply a force here. It's pretty clear to us, without any formal physics training, that these two things are going to cause a rotation in the same direction. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't take anything particularly special to figure that out. All that the right-hand rule does is formalize it, because some situations aren't quite as clear, um, but it does give us a formalized way of describing the direction of the motion. So rather than saying that, oh, okay, so this is twisting it um, clockwise, 
because clockwise depends on which side you're on. If there were people on the other side of the screen, for instance, looking at this, they would think that it's counterclockwise. But if we all say, let's use the right hand rule, we're all going to agree that it's going in the, and if I just draw this in here, this would be the negative x direction. So we would all agree that it's heading in the negative x direction, okay, as far as the torque, the direction of the torque. Now, what does that mean? Um, to help us with that, I'm going to do an example of the other right hand rule. Um, but before we do that, I'm um, just going to um, go through one more case. Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to use my actual right hand to help us see how this looks with your right hand. And we're going to go through a couple of examples. We, we really learned about only a couple of different cases. Um, we learned about the torque case. And it looks like my cam went away, so I'm going to have to make sure that I don't draw with that. Hold on. There it goes. So we learned about the torque case, and we also learned about the uh, velocity case. So let's just do a quick example with the torque case for first. This is what we saw on the previous screen. If I have R cross F, what that says is you put your hand in the direction of R. And let me see if I can get this to look about right. Here we go. Okay. So I put my hand in the direction of R, and then I'm going to curl my fingers into the direction of F, and it looks like uh, it's going to go the wrong way. So I have to flip my hand over. Very tricky maneuver to flip one's hand over, but you can pull it off. And so now my palm is lined up with the radius vector, and then I curl my fingers in the direction of the force, and my thumb is pointing up um, or into the screen. Um, it's up for me because I have the webcam pointing up, but um, in any case, it's going into the screen. It's going in that negative x direction that I had previously defined. Okay, so that gives us that direction. Now, if I if I do something similar, if I take my hand and maybe put it this way, okay, so this would be heading off to the left side of the circle. If I apply a force up in this case, my thumb is continuing continuing to point in the same direction into the board, and that's because a force on this side over here would cause the same type of rotation as the force on the top of it. Same as the force downwards on the right side of the circle. Um, now there's the other case that I, we talked about which is the V equals omega cross R. And what that's suggesting to us is first of all we, we kind of need to know what omega is but we can find this through a different means. We know that V is our thumb. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll point my my hand in the direction of V. And we'll see if I can pull that off right. Okay, so my thumb is going in the direction of V. And I know that I'm crossing something with R, so my fingers are pointing downwards. Okay? So what I need to do then is I need to get my thumb pointing off to the side. My fingers are pointing actually... It's a little bit awkward, but that's the direction that my fingers are going to be pointing down the screen for you. And V is off to the side. So that means that omega in this case is into the screen. Okay? So it's going to be into the screen in this case because my fingers are pointing in the direction of R. The second vector is the direction of your fingers. My thumb, the resultant vector, V, my thumb's representing the resultant vector, and that's pointing off to the left. Okay? And so that means omega must be up into the screen. Okay? So if we're, we have omega going into the screen, then that works out uh, quite nicely in this case, because if you imagine what's going on, is uh, the torque created by this force at this radius is going to cause a twisting, we might say clockwise. So that's going to cause a V down at the bottom to be off to the left. So with a down the screen radial direction and a to the left velocity vector, we would get an into the screen omega, which is exactly what happened with the palm of my hand. So let's just um, experiment with that for a second. So I'm pointing my palm into the screen. I curl my fingers to be down the screen. And my thumb now points off to the side, which is exactly the direction that we would we would expect it to be going. Now the question is, why is omega off to the side? Or, I mean, sorry, into the screen. So to make it into the screen, 
another way that we can determine this is if I realize that it's rotating this way, clockwise, okay? What I can do is I can take my hand and I can make it twist in the, well, this will work just, nope, oh, other way. This will work fine, okay? So I make it rotate in the clockwise direction like this. So I just move my hand in the direction that I see this wheel spinning, okay? And as I curl my hand in that direction, my thumb points into the screen, which is the direction of the rotation. So our hand does all these sorts of weird gymnastics curling around, but our thumb just does the same thing. No matter how much I twist, how much I twist, my thumb keeps pointing in that direction, okay? So I just take my hand, whoops, take my hand, twist in the direction that I see the motion going, and my thumb points in the direction of the rotation, okay? Um, and that would be into the screen in this case, which meshes nicely with what we had found omega to be by applying the right hand 